Good evening. Welcome to the Deerfield Planning Board meeting, May 14th, 2018, at 7 p.m. here in the down, uh, Deerfield Town Hall at 8 Conway Street. Uh, first thing on our agenda is we're going to review our previous meeting minutes. I move that we accept the meeting. Yeah, good. Well, yeah, it would. Uh, well, where is this at? Yeah. Over. It's, it's not River Road, is it? You're right, but it's not River Road, it's Mill Village Road, I don't know. Jay? Oh, this is, I think it should be. Oh, no. yes, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Mill Village Road. Road. Yeah, I get you. I get you. No, no, Is it yeah, Mill no, Village no. Road? It was Lower Road. Was it Lower Road? Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got you. Okay. I don't know how that got in here, but. Near River. Near River. That's right. No. Is the mic on? Are the mics on? No. You can't no. hear us. Hey, John. Are they on? Are they on now? Mics up, John. Can everybody hear me? No. <laughs> He's the only one. Yeah. Can you turn those up? Turn them up. But isn't it, I think we need to be really clear on this. This is not on Lower Road. It's Wells Cross and, and uh, State Road or? No, the, he did. The ones here referenced were on Lower Road for Jay's house from his mother's. Okay. Oh, that's the one. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I know. Can you hear those? Can you turn those up? Can you turn them up? They can't hear us. They can't hear us. I mean, I can move in this close, but. I see. So this was the first property that we split. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Got it, got it, got yeah. it, got it. So the World's Crossroad. Oh. Whoa, hello. Hey. <laughs> I might sing now. The, um, the Wells Cross, th then that's the wrong, it's in the wrong place. That's all I'm saying. Okay. We so can we, those cars. What's in the wrong place? It, it's where it says Wells Cross Road. We should just cross that out because this is the lower road property, the first one. And we didn't do anything with the, the Wells Cross Road property. Okay. Right? So right, that's, that's a clarity that, that we should that be correct? sure about. Yeah, okay. So we'll just change that to lower road twice. Okay. And just axe out, just cross out Wells Cross Road on that first paragraph. I did, I did, yep. Sorry, I was confusing the two. Okay. Do you have a motion? I move that I, we... I also want to cross out the voted thing here on the, under the second one there. We didn't vote anything on it. Yep. Sorry, yep, that's yep, a mistake. Yep, So with those two fairly significant changes, mm -hmm. I move that we accept the meeting notes as amended. Second. Discussion? Any more discussion? No. Okay. All now, those in favor? Now we've got wicked Aye. feedback. Aye. All those opposed? No. Too close to that, maybe. Okay. Four zero zero. Yep. And who, who moved them? Me. Rachel. Rachel. And mm -hmm. Kip, you second them? Yep. Yes. So we've moved, all right. Okay, uh, at this time I'd like to open a public hearing uh, for site plan review for 141 Greenfield Road. And the Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public hearing on May 8th, which is, was postponed to today at 7 p.m. in the Deerfield Municipal Offices, 8 Conway Street, pursuant to section 5400 and 2230 of the Deerfield Zoning Bylaws to review plans submitted by MIB Construction on behalf of veterinarian 
Emergency Specialty Hospital located at 141 Greenfield Road, Assessor's Map 141, Lot 8, for construction of an addition to the existing facility. Is there someone here from MIB? Really? Wow. Um, Has anyone seen these plans? Yeah, they came. Didn't they come up by email? I, they did, but I get a small set. I got a Oops. Okay. Did you see them, Max? Yeah. You got a picture there? Yeah. Is yeah. It? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sixteen by forty-six feet mm -hmm. addition. It looks like. Yeah. That. Mm -hmm. The little bit that I know of this addition is for um, additional uh, clinic space mm -hmm. uh, to the, I guess it's the southeast side of the building. Um, it's going to be one story. Um, it's here before us before because it's greater than the 600 square feet, so it needs a site plan review. Uh, requires no additional parking, lighting, or any of those things. Going well, it's headed south on the this south. This is this is Route Five here. Right, so, so it's so moving it's closer to the road. To A little bit closer, but yeah. more southerly then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No additional parking or anything, Kip. They're just putting no. that little addition on. They're just putting that little addition on. Yeah. And have the fees been paid? No. They have. Mm -hmm. Anyone have any? I was just going to say, if they're not nope. here, can we vote on it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I make a motion that we accept the plans as presented. Okay. I'll second it. Is there any more discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. Right. I guess we'll close the public hearing. Next item on our agenda is an A&R for 477 Greenfield Road. And this is land from uh, Williams's property where the um, garden store is and uh, Sugar Williams House. Sugar House. You guys want to take a look at that? Okay, sure. Yep. It's Dan here? No, I don't think so. I haven't seen yeah, he's right there. Okay. So Hi. you might have to sit hey. there so you can be oh, right. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. Does everybody have a copy? So we're looking at the plan here. Yeah, it looks pretty straightforward. It's so. pretty straightforward. They just want to separate the two buildings. Mm -hmm. and they both meet front and area and all mm -hmm. that. So. Okay. Great. Anyone want to make a motion for this? I move we accept the plans as presented. I'll second. Sorry. We feel like we'll either get feedback or one. So I move that we plan. Approve, uh, endorse, sorry, these yep. plans as presented the ANR. with the ANR to split this property um, on Greenfield Road, 477, uh, 477 Greenfield, Greenfield Road. Road. Yep. Uh, it conforms with our regulations. Yep. Roger, you second it? Yes, I second it. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 That doesn't usually go that easily, Dan. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Mm -hmm. okay. this is you have to sign it right 
Yep. You have to sign in too. The I'll, 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 I'll sign, sign in, in before in. I leave. Thank you. Doesn't matter. Pass that one down. Okay, get get two. We just need two in the in the mylar. Is that all? Mm -hmm. You sign those two where you go. All right. There you, go. you can take two of the copies if you want. We don't need them all. Okay, I'll take these two. I think, is that right? How many do we need sure. to get? I don't need the paper ones. Okay, uh, then. Oh, I really need all we need is three. Yep. That's two more there, yeah. If you want them, you can have them. I think, I think we technically only need two. Okay. I think. Okay. Or you need three. We need three? Yeah, I think I'll just, I think just, just take one. Thank you. Okay, there you go. All right, see you later. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Um, but do you want to look at a review of the A&R for Savage Farms at Wells Crossroad, Plains Street? Okay. Randy and Jay, if you like it. Sorry, so our next, our next on, item on the agenda is to um, pursue a and R Sorry. for Wells Crossroad. So we went down. And A and R John, if you can turn for, it up a little bit. It's, um, it's feeding back, but now it's too long. Um, property divide on Wells Crossroad. So the last time we met, we had a plan on Wells Crossroad that was a little confusing to the board, and it has since been. So you need to actually probably just give us those and then go back and talk into the mic. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's fine. We, I'll we, take one so that I can. Okay. Instruct us. Yep. All right, good. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Okay. So the last time we were here, we, th this plan that's on Wells Cross Road and the corner of Greenfield Road, there was two separate parcels that we were dealing with. One on the south side of Wells Cross Road, which is farmland being divided into two separate parcels. The other parcel was the house at the corner of Greenfield Road and Wells Cross Road, which we were going to divide into two building lots, one with the existing house on it, an empty lot, and then a 20-foot strip to sell to the neighbor. That deal isn't going according to plan, so it is off the table currently. So that part of the a and is, is not on this plan. It's just the parcels on the south side of Wells Cross Road, one piece of farmland being turned into two separate parcels, one to be retained by Savage and one to be sold to one of the neighbors. Well, they both have adequate frontage and they meet the requirements, acreage and stuff, so. How about this angle? What is, do you want to just yes. talk the angle of the between the two lots there's basically the west side of that line is level farmland the east side drops down into uh, 
a wet area, pasture, whatever you want to call it. So the, the purpose for the line being in the direction it is is to just maintain the farmland as it is and the pasture as it is. So it's it's one it's one uh, one deed in the book seven one five zero page one fifty three and you're splitting it in half. Correct. Okay, good. Make it easy on you tonight. Yeah. I'm sorry. Make it easy on you tonight. Yes. Yes. Uh, make a motion. I make a motion as accept the plan as presented. Second. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's sign these and let them go. Did everybody get a chance to sign in? This lets us know. Yes, 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 no. Okay, yep. Pass them around, sign them all. So that just uh, since I don't have it in front of me, it's book 7150. Three, I think. I don't have it in front of me anymore either. I yeah, gave, okay. I gave it up. Is it book, does it say, did you say uh, book 170, 7150? 7150. Page 153. Okay. Here. Yep, somebody did. Yep, yep. Okay. What's that one you've got there, um, Max? That's not, that's done? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Yep. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. The next item on our agenda is we're having an informal discussion on a proposed retail establishment at the corner of Mill Village Road and Greenfield Road. Is there anyone here to speak to that? Thank you. Uh, sure. I think over here, actually, for the cameras, I suspect, right? Yeah, I think so. I think we have one on both sides. Oh. I, I just. Do? I don't know. You can ask Chris. I assume they're all working. I have not thank you. <laughs> Technical difficulties. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Well, so it really matters how we speak into these. And we get people to now. One of you is yes. Well, the problem is that so what you might do is if you want to just push it back a little bit toward um, so that people can see it that direction, that would be great. Um, and the uh, but we need to see it too. So yeah. Okay. Go. Because at this point, a lot of these people here are going to be Yep. We just need to be able to see it, too. And, and are you Matthew? And you're? My name is Patrick. Patrick? Yes. And what's your last name, Patrick? I've got my card for here. Okay. Yeah, that'd be you guys need one or two, like four? I'll just tell you. I, I want one. I don't know if anybody else does. <clears throat> okay. Sure. Good evening. Uh, for the record, my name is Matt Bombasi with Bowler Engineering. I'm here with Patrick Natriba from the applicant is South Deerfield DG Series LLC. Um, we're here, as you noted, for an informal meeting. I actually appreciate the opportunity to get in front of the board. Um, we've submitted the application for site plan review, a special permit for a parking reduction, and the stormwater permit. Uh, I think we'll be on the formal agenda next month, but this month it's great to meet with you and get Get your initial thoughts. Could you tell me again, um, he, he gave, he's got a title LLC. I didn't see that anywhere on the card. Right. So oh. our LLC is underneath our parent company, which is Lascotti Development. You need to speak right into the mic so that everybody can hear. Yeah. Our LLC is underneath our parent company, which is Lascotti Development. Okay. And what was the LLC? Pull it right name? close to your mouth if you South can pull it right Deerfield next to your mouth. South Deerfield LLC is underneath our yeah, parent okay. company, which is Lascotti Development. We're good? Okay. That's all I want. Thank you. Cool. Um, so the site is located at the corner of Mill Village Road and Greenfield Road Number 5. You're probably familiar with it. Um, it's for a proposed Dollar General retail store. For those that aren't familiar with that store, um, it, it's Dollar General. It's not a dollar store. It's essentially a general retail store that would be very similar to the products that would be sold at a CVS, except for obviously no pharmacy, but similar range of projects, uh, products here, household needs, things like that. Um, the proposed building is a 9,100 square foot building. Um, it'll have proposed to have 30 parking spaces. As I've noted previously, the zoning bylaw requires 38 parking spaces, so we are requesting a special permit from the board for reduction in the parking spaces. Um, we have set aside an area for eight parking spaces off to the right of, of the loading dock in case we ever need to build those. And we did design our stormwater system to accommodate those eight spaces if they were built. It wouldn't and how many spaces did you say? We're, pro we're Sorry, proposing 30, 30, and the bylaw requires 30 38. 30 spaces, okay, yeah. I, I didn't hear it right. Um, we think it would be best not to, to build those spaces. A, we don't need them. B, it's an additional impervious area. And C, they're, they would be closer to the abutting residential neighborhood. So we think for all those reasons, it would it would make sense not to, um, but that said, we have that area available aside if we needed to ever in the future or for another future use needed to. Um, the proposed um, layout is accessing off of Greenfield Road. Um, there's an existing permitted driveway there with mass DOT that we'll be reutilizing with a 22-foot wide drive. 
The project itself um, is a very low traffic generator as far as these uses go, about 60 trips in the peak hour, which is actually 30 vehicles, 30 in, 30 out. Um, so very low um, as far as that goes. Um, so not anticipated any additional permitting, permitting with Mass DOT. Um, pretty standard as far as that goes. Um, we, the driveway is coming off Greenfield Road. We know there's been some traffic concerns with Mill Village Road and the Yankee Candle facility there, and we think for all those reasons, plus um, just accessibility to the state highway, it makes most sense to come off Greenfield Road as opposed to increasing the, the traffic that the residential abutters experience on Mill Village Road. Um, we're proposing a, a fence along the, the back side or the right side of the plan as you're coming across, um, which is in between us and the abutters. The abutters were actually, or some of the abutters were nice enough to meet with us um, on Friday evening or members of our offices, and we discussed the project with them. A couple of their requests were to increase the height of the fence from six feet to eight feet and to run the fence instead of just that one side to bring it down um, Mill Village Road about halfway to where the, the Yankee Candle entrance is and to increase at uh, Evergreen. Just plantings. out of curiosity, what kind of fence were you going to make? It's a, it's a wood fence. It's, um, it's like a stockade type fence? It's like a slab fence. It doesn't have the pointed tops. It has a kind of a dog-eared top, but okay. yeah, a wood fence. And we'll put Evergreen plantings um, between the road and the fence or between the abutters and the fence coming across there. Mm -hmm. Um, we are here for a stormwater management permit as well. Um, again, we've designed a stormwater management system in accordance with the Mass DEP regulations um, and did include those eight parking spaces just in that calculation. Um, and also, we've designed an erosion and sediment control plan for any construction period type stuff. We will be required to file to EPA for the typical construction general permit for disturbance over an acre, and we'll file that and prepare the slip <coughs> prior to construction as well. Um, utilities, we have municipal uh, water and public gas in the street and electric, only private utility would be septic. Um, we have passing septic tests and we've begun that design and we'll submit that to the Board of Health um, during this process. Are you going to be able to get gas from the street? Uh, yeah, in, in preliminary indications are that we are, that we can. Yep. Oh, well, there's a moratorium right now, that's why I wondered. And, yeah, I think we've reached out and they did say that we could, we could do it, but we'll, we'll double check on that moratorium. Yeah, they've given us an affirmative on that. But Perhaps your data is more current. Yeah. The, the question is about gas from the street and the issue being addressed. We believe we can obtain gas from the street. Okay. Great. Um, we submitted the applications. We submitted $250 fee checks for the site plan and the, um, and the special permit application. There's a provision in there about um, square footage of disturbance in, in calculating the fee. That fee calculation for a project of this type was um, extraordinary to what we would typically expect. Um, speaking with Priscilla, who runs with the board, she says sometimes the board looks at these types of projects and, and sets the fees based on, on on the project type or what, what would be appropriate. So we didn't know we didn't know what the past experience had been, but wanted to. to the the get fee there. on our stormwater um, application is by disturbed area, so yep. you can calculate the disturbed area. That's anything that you you know touch yep. uh, would come under that. Uh, we currently have a uh, limit of $3,000 for that, but it would have to be a substantial amount. I don't think you have enough land there to okay. come close to that. And then for site plan and, and the special permit? Those fees don't, they're just the set two, $250 fees, but it's okay. the disturbance is primarily for the storm water. Okay. Excellent. I know you've heard from them now. <laughs> Slow down. Absolutely. Um, for, for, light, absolutely. for lighting, um, all lighting will be downcast, fully cut off at 90 degrees. Um, lights stay on generally half hour till after closing. They'll leave one small wall pack light on the front and the side of the building on. Um, no, no lights on the back of the building um, or, or anywhere in that back area there. Um, for landscaping, like I said, the key landscaping element to us is between our project and the, develop, and the uh, residential development to the rear, where we're doing the stockade fence and evergreens. We are also proposing some plantings along the, uh, the front parking area just between our project and, and Greenfield Road, just to add a little, a little bit of element there. Um, and then I think meeting with the abutters, they mentioned some possible uh, limited shade trees through that area, and we can look, take a look at that and whatever the, the board thinks looks good. Or, So if you could speak right into the mic, that would be really helpful. Okay. Sorry, 
Anything else, Matt? Um, I, I'm happy to get into more details, but without um, badgering you with uh, specific details, any specific things you guys would like to discuss at this preliminary stage, or be happy um, to discuss. I I don't have a whole lot of uh, questions at this point. Um, I've briefly looked at your plans, uh, and I, I'll be looking forward to reviewing your your submission and seeing what is actually put on there. Um, my only uh, question is, is your client at all open to changing the design of the building to make it look more colonial than you know, a square type facility? Yeah, sure. I mean, the, the shape of the building itself is a little, is a little um, how it needs to be. But as far as the appearance of the building, we got that comment from the abutters when we met on Friday. And we anticipated the comment from the board as well. Um, the architectural elevation we sent the board was the prototypical dollar general elevation, sure. which they asked us to submit for an initial application. Um, we've already gone um, to our architect and worked out and instituting collaborative siding on the building um, and some different features to add some colors instead of the block front. Um, I have that with me if you wanted to review that now. Well, or? I, I particularly don't, but I, okay. I've seen some other uh, Dollar General stores that have, you know, a clapboard siding and stuff like that that make them look more colonial. Yeah, the sure. The, the, sure. The material certainly makes a big difference, and sure. and that's that's the first change. And I think we're amenable to that change to get some clapboard siding on there, so it's yeah. not the, the the block front. Are you guys prepared to have all your submissions in by next uh, month? Um, yeah, I believe we've hearing? we've submitted um, the whole package already, um, and we can submit any updated um, architecturals prior to next month as well. All right. I, I just didn't see any architecturals for the building. I saw the building location and the site plan okay. and stuff like that. I just I didn't see it, but I don't know if you've um, submitted anything <clears throat> excuse me, to the building department in the last couple of days, but I, I haven't seen it. So. No, we'll submit the uh, building elevations in the, in the next couple of days. Okay. And uh, did you submit that all in digital format or just <clears throat> in hard copy? I believe I sent a PDF to Priscilla, but I'll, I'll double check, and if we didn't, okay. we'll send one. Right. When you say um, you're, you have a traffic study, you, don't, you haven't done a traffic study at this point. You're just basing it off of previous experience with other stores. Uh, no, there's, um, we use the Institute of Transportation Engineers uh, data for trip generation. So we've done a, an analysis of the trips generated by this store to be 65 in the peak hour. In that area or just in the peak hour? So not relative to the current traffic that's in that area, but just in general with these, this type of store? For our development, yep. Okay. And that's 65 trips. It doesn't mean 65 new people are coming sure. on this road. A lot of them are passed by trips. Sure, like that. I understand. Anyone else have any questions? Uh, I just want to, because it's not a traffic study done in this, at, at this locale. That's all. No. Correct, okay. And the Institute of Transportation Engineers basically um, breaks it down as if you have more than 100 vehicles per hour in the peak hour, then you might, be, might have an impact or potentially have an impact on the surrounding roadway. If you're under 100, then, then typically a, a full traffic study at a particular location is not required. And that's the, the rules Mass DOT follows, really, the, the, the general engineering world. I see. Max? Any questions for Roger at this time? I know screening is going to be a big thing, and yeah. you touched on it. Here, Roger, talk it. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, screening is going to be a big thing in the appearance of the building also. I'm sure. I'm curious, is it a flat roof you're proposing, or is it a pitched roof? Or It'll be a, a flat roof with um, something on the front to block the, the, yeah. um, the on, on the roof utilities. Yeah, it'll, it'll be a flat roof with a parapet. Yeah. And the building you proposed, what was the siding on it? It'll be a... Uh, uh, Hardy Plank collaborative siding. Color? Um, I think we're amenable to colors with a, um, we call that yellow. a traditional New England palette, yeah. a, a yellow or a uh, you know, brown or a silver or you know, something of that like. We haven't finalized it yet, but we're open to suggestions on that. You say the front is going to be block? Uh, no, that's their prototype is the front block. In this case, we're going to upgrade that to Hardy Plank because we heard the comment from the abutters and we anticipated yeah. it from the board as well. And what are your store operation hours? Um, they operate 8 a.m. to 10 p.m., seven days a week. Um, their deliveries are typically once per week. They'll have one large deliveries. They might have some other smaller deliveries throughout the week. But and the only, road, the only access is off of Greenfield Road? Correct, yep. Just that one driveway? Road. Just one driveway, yep. Right. 
And your loading dock, <coughs> where will it be? In lo They'll be off if you're looking at the building, which is the shaded block there. They're off to the back right. And, and did I understand that you said that there's already a curb cut off of a Greenfield Road? Yes, there's and a curb cut with a PSG. Where's right the location there. of that? I've never seen it there, so it's. Mm -hmm. It's um, the same location. Yeah, it's, it's shown on the plan right? coming up. It's, uh, it's got a few deep in there. Greenfield Road? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think so, oh. but that's okay. That doesn't mean anything. Yeah. If it's there, it's yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Before, yeah, before the trees went down, it was more apparent. <laughs> Well, it was more apparent with the trees, I think. That's what I mean. Before the trees went down, it was more apparent. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, let me ask the uh, audience. Is there any questions that people would love to have? <laughs> we did uh, a... Hey, I wonder if John what, could bring a mic out for what, them to use. What you're going to have to do is come up to the table. He'll share his mic, and you can please identify yourself and, and ask away. Uh, this one. Hi, my name is Mike Gilmore. Um, Mike Gilmore? Yes. Not related to Mark, but. <laughs> um, so I have two questions. Uh, one happens to be that um, I'm sure a lot of the people in the audience and yourself have traveled through that intersection around 5 o'clock. And it is an extreme tra traffic hazard as it is right now. I have seen numerous occasions where people have not abided by the fact that people turning left or right need to form a single line. They pass on the right. There's people coming out. And I've seen many, many close calls without any of this going in there. And if you're actually putting um, a driveway on the side there, now you're going to introduce traffic that is traveling towards Greenfield, turning into it, in which people are going to want to pass that traffic to get around it. And then you got people coming the other way that are not going to be very cautious about this. My concern is if you do not do a traffic study, because I don't know what your peak hours are, I would assume it's people getting out of work is probably when your peak hours is, you're going to create an extreme traffic hazard above what you have today. That's the first point. The second concern I have is I'm tired of hearing Deerfield in the news. And I'm tired of hearing about all the drug trafficking that's driving through our town on 91. I've heard you mention something about lighting, and at night you reduce the lighting. My concern is that's going to become a perfect place for people to pull off and do a drug deal. And I understand that you don't want to put lighting for the abutters, but I think something has to be done to look at this because there's a lot of kids in the area, and the last thing we want to do is turn this thing into some place where people can come off 91, do something, get back on Route 5. And if you don't think this is a reality, just check all the police logs, because this is turning into something that is really a focus for us. Tired of watching 22 News and having Deerfield noted on 91 or on Route 5. And I think you need to be concerned about that as not residents of this community, that we don't turn this into a place for people to meet when you're not in business. Those are my two points. Uh, and and, and I, I understand, and I, uh, I'm very concerned as well, but this community just voted to legalize drugs, so. But not the kind of drugs that I'm talking about. Exactly. Yes. So, Kip, Kip, with all due respect, Kip, yeah. what I'm hearing in the news has yeah. to do with heroin and I opioids, I and I don't think we legalized that. No, we did not. Wow. Good luck. Gilmore. Hi. I'm, I'm Amy Gazen Schwartz. I live on Evans Lane, and I'm a trustee of the Mill Village East Condominium Association, the direct immediate abutters of this project. Um, I have a list of concerns that I'm going to give you. Some of them have been already addressed. Some of them are town-wide, the traffic concerns, the concerns about the lot being open when the store is closed. Um, but as the director of Butters, we also have very specific concerns relative to us, including concerns about the size of the building, the location of parking, the direction of lights coming into the thing, um, the buffer. So if, for example, you build a wall right along the, our whole line, that will be 
very oppressive to the people living in the house, the first house along, uh, along Mill Village Road, which is really close to that line. So there might be ways to get around that, moving the fence other ways. There are ways to get around some of our concerns. Um, and we did meet with some representatives from both companies. On the, some of the trustees met with them on Friday and, and brought these concerns to them as well, so they're aware of them. One of the things I would like to point, oh, so one of the questions I have that I, we didn't address before this too. One is how tall will the building be? Because even an eight foot fence isn't gonna block a 30 foot tall building from our bedroom windows. No, I can answer that. The, the building will be 14 feet tall about at the rear. 14 feet at the rear, thank you. Will you have, will you provide a full render drawing with context and landscape and like pictures of cars and people relative to the building and stuff? Will you be able to provide that to the planning board? Yeah, we can a look into rendered something that'll give someone an idea of the scope of the elevation. Yeah, not just there. the elevation though, but something that shows the, how the plans for the landscaping, the plans the fence in place, little people walking around relative to the building. Yes. Thanks. That, that actually should be part of the site plan review right. anyways. A full rendered, yeah. a full rendered ar yeah. architectural yeah. drawing. Um, we're concerned about buffers. We're, concern we're very concerned about traffic. And um, lighting. We're concerned about deliveries. That place where the delivery loading dock is, is again on our side of the building. I understand that the reason for that is because the septic is on the other side, which is probably good for our septic systems. Um, but again, we're going to, you're going to have people and kids and families hanging out there, use, trying to use their backyards while a tractor trailer truck is coming up or Pepsi or you know, box trucks are coming out up unloading. So it's gonna impact our lives. It's gonna impact our enjoyment of our property. It's going to impact our property values, I would expect. Um, and I guess my, my sort of summing up point is that this is the kind of only commercial lot pretty much between the Butterfly Museum and Yankee Candle, which is surrounded on two sides by residential neighborhood. It's not backed onto by agricultural land or other commercial buildings. There's a residential neighborhood right next to this. So I think that that, that is, is a different, is an unusual situation on that part, on that stretch of Route 5 and 10 and whatever Greenfield Road is. Um, and I think needs some consideration. I know that the engineers and the developers have thought about some of those problems, but I probably are going to need to think some more about things like what's the impact of having a big giant fence right next to your house. So one of my, one of my neighbors also asked the question, which is relative to the question about drug deals, is there a way that the entrance, that the driveway can be blocked when the store is closed, for example? I'm not sure how the fire department would feel about that, but my guess is no is the answer to that question. Okay. Well, when this, when this all gets done, uh, the police department, the fire department, yeah. all the town boards will get a, uh, an expression of what their sure problems are going to be with it are. before this is done. Appreciate it. George, is there anything else? Okay. okay. Did you want to turn that in, that list? I will, I will if I can give this to you. Sure. Well, yeah. And, and we're happy to take a look at the position of the and, fence. And I, rather than me butchering your name, could you write your name on here too? Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't, do we need the address? Yeah, put it down. Okay, Perfect. yeah, go ahead. Oh, here, oh yeah, there's one there. Sure, no problem. Any contact information you want there is fine. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Darren Gray, resident of South Deerfield. Uh, you mentioned a special permit for parking reduction. Uh, 
This commercial zone also requires a special permit for square footage over 4,000. You didn't mention that. Uh, that's the ZBA. That's another board. But it's still a special permit. Yes. So any special permit is going to require a written determination that benefits of the proposed use outweigh its detrimental impacts on the town and neighborhood in view of the particular characteristics of the site. As you say, it goes to the ZBA. Mm -hmm. um, I just hope this board takes under its power and influence to also promote those uh, con the characteristics, the neighborhood, mm -hmm. whatever we can do for those aspects. Um, for traffic, have you taken traffic counts out there at this point? No. No, we have not. The intersections on the uh, mass DOT mapping for high traffic incidents. So that should really be something that goes with that initial application, not something you follow up with if it's requested. Mm -hmm. um, is the stormwater calculations that take into account the removal of the trees and the change on the uh, runoff curves for that land? Yes, sir. They do? So. so you designed for that? So this calculus must have been done in the last week then? Uh, no, I, I take into account the fact that the trees are there, not that the trees are missing. You have to revise those uh, calculations then. I also hope the board takes into account the landowner's actions with that adjacent DOT land, the impacts they already made on the neighborhood and the town without any approval from the DOT. I'm going to be getting a copy of those uh, permit approvals he received in 14, which from what I understand are already expired. But when you talk about the characteristics of this town and the neighborhood, which have already been impacted, I hope this board and the Zoning Board of Appeals also, again, uses its full powers to uh, impact the nature of this development. Thank you. Next. Julie Cavaco. Um, I want to make sure that our signage rules within the town, make sure it's not a big yellow and black sign that's blazing above the top in neon. Um, I don't know what they are now, but I know that a bunch of the signs within the town are smaller and lower, so I want to make sure there's no neon there or nothing garish, because it sounds like to me that if you're willing to make an effort to make the building match the style of the town, the sign is in no way going to match that. So that itself is going to be a big mishmash. And I definitely agree with um, the traffic on 5 and 10. Um, you know, I live up near uh, North Hillside by the Butterfly Place, and that's, it's a functioning corner. It's, you know, we get in and out, but um, Mike Gilmore mentioned the idea of the people pass on the right, and you've seen a kip over there. Um, the road is, is not at all. Um, conducive to more traffic, anything that adds a lot to that corner. So that has to be really well addressed and um, um, has to be assured that it's going to be a safe corner. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Lori Busada. So I live across the street, and in addition to wanting the sign to not be garish, because the only place right now in South Deerfield that we have um, nationwide chains are at the corner of Elm Street and 5 and 10. Uh, it's a rural, antique uh, farm stand neighborhood in the area that you're talking about right now. So having lights on till, you said, half an hour past closing, 11 o'clock at night, um, doesn't sit well with me. And I also second the, uh, the lighting matching, the, the signage matching the area that it's located in. Can I address a few? <laughs> hey, just address a few things there. Our lights are full cutoff, uh, i.e. full dark sky compliant, in addition to the fact they're all forward throw inward to the site, and we'll be in compliance with all of your Regulations, regulations regarding site lighting. Furthermore, the lights that are on after opening, and Matt will step in and correct me, there's only a small set that are on for security at that time. So it's not the full site lighting complement. It's a sure. small amount that would okay. be you know, required by... The lighting would still be on until 11. That's not correct. No, it would be 10.30. Yeah. 
Yes, sir. Good evening. I'd like to see well, an me, architectural sir. rendering of the finished product. Now, I know it's not possible to give one to everybody here, but if you can provide that to the trustees of Mill Village East and Mill Village West, they can disseminate that to the members. And we have an idea of what it looks like instead of just a drawing. Okay. We understand and one will be provided. What's coming? We understand and one will be provided. Thank you very much. And they also would be available at the town hall. Thank you. What was your name, sir? Excuse me, sir. What was your name? Oh, sorry. Ken Cornoyer. Okay. Mill Village West. Thank you. Ken, and could you spell your last name? C O N Y E R. C O U R. Cornoyer. C O Y E R. Cornoyer. Is there anyone else? Steven Swoboda. Um, up from uh, the town line up to that intersection, uh, uh, all the driveways um, uh, to um, the various business and stuff have pull-offs. Uh, the ones going north have a, 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 a left-turning pull-off uh, up to that point, and it makes it possible um, because there's a 50-mile-an-hour speed limit between uh, the fire station and uh, North Main Street. Um, but now, I mean, everything kind of happens right there. And there have been a lot of instances right, right at that intersection you know, with people going to the transfer station and uh, making turns because there's heavy traffic going down North Main Street turns. So it's a heavily turned area right there. So it seems like something uh, to deal with the uh, uh, the traffic and allowing it to move without just totally backing up there from a 50 mile an hour to zero. So. Well, I think most of the markings on the road would be up to the state to deal with. And, you know, they would address that. If that's what your concern is. So it was totally up to the state, all the pull-offs and along there. Yeah. The yeah, town yeah, had nothing yeah. to do with it. Mm -hmm. all right. So we have... We have nothing to do with that. All right. So, yeah. but then why are we ta even talking about well, traffic? Because we well, can't, they'll, they'll come to us for our permission first before they even start to review it. That's the order of operations. So we have to give an okay before they actually do that. So it, it is, does matter what we, we say. Right. About so it, seem, it seems like, you know, coming up with some solution there instead of just throwing more, yeah. you know, businesses in an area. I mean, but it's, I mean, we do talk about it, but it's really. Not us. I mean, we're we're not the experts. At we're you know we're your neighbors. Right. Uh, we're right. volunteers to do this to help keep well, our town. What's the history of that right away? What what was the planning? You know, uh, was it just like a small? I mean, there's big well, difference. There yeah, I, the the state has done a lot of work on that road uh, specifically. Are they the ones that grant the uh, cuts and stuff that have happened? Uh, exactly. Yeah, and they also did a lot of work on the Cumberland Farms down there, and every right. single place that there's a business. The uh, state, it goes through the local uh, district, too, and then it goes to the state. Because I think uh, where Walter par parks his, um, Walter's Gas parks his trucks, there's a chain across there at, uh, when they're not in business. Mm -hmm. So it seems like, you know, I don't know whether the fire department has a key, but I wouldn't, they wouldn't have any problem getting through there anyways. So mm -hmm. There could be solutions. seems like there ought to be some place to talk about them within the town and not have to go to Boston. Well, they'll, they'll Boston will be involved in it before it's done. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Yes. Oh, oh one, two, two, three. Of them is straight down. Um, Elissa Clement. Elissa Clemens. Yeah, Clement with a K, K L E M E N T. And I just had a question about whether a proper or when a proper traffic study will be done, given the evidence of insufficient infrastructure for that area to handle this level of traffic mm -hmm. and the safety concerns. I think we'll be ordering that 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 comes with the permitting process when we okay. go through because they'll be looking for that kind of information from the police and from the fire just in the order. And if it's determined that a traffic light is required there. 
Will that be put in before the um, store is constructed? And who will pay for that? That would have, we would have no control over that. Once again, it would be the, the Department of Transportation and they would, it would be up to them to whatever they do. Will, will they be at any of the planning board meetings, or is that just a No, they, okay. they do it they, totally independent on their, their own. They never come here at all. Okay, so we would need to contact them. Okay. Yeah. All right, all right. thank you. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Ken Schoen. I have a quick question. I'm not very familiar with dollar stores, so for my ignorance, can you give us a sense of some of the products you'll be carrying? Will you be carrying foodstuffs? Will there be fruits, vegetables, cereals, anything that might compete with our local markets that are getting set up? Or is it just basically products, you know, made things for a dollar or a dollar fifty, whatever, and there's no food products? Right, we can, I can answer that. The misnomer with Dollar General is that their name, it's, it does not really a good indicator of what they sell. The best way I can describe it to you is that it's a, a CVS without the pharmacy in terms of a product assortment. So if you can picture that in your mind, you know, minus what you would find uh, in the pharmacy, of course, that's Dollar General's merchandise assortment. Yes, there are foodstuffs. Yes, there is general merchandise. Can you be more specific the kind of foods you'll be carrying? Uh, the... Are you talking about yogurt? You're talking about fruits, vegetables, fresh? The, what kind of products? Are the, they cereals? Yes, what? yes to all of those. Fresh vegetables also? I think occasionally they will carry a fresh vegetable if it, if it is in a packaged component, but it certainly isn't a farm stand. So don't let me mischaracterize it for you. Okay. Yeah. Dairy? Yes, dairy is there. Is there anyone else? Yes, Kathy. Hello. My name is Kathy Wachroba, and I live on 18th Air Street. Um, so I have some perspective and retrospection on this. Um, I abut a piece of property <laughs> where a very large building was built. Um, and trees were put up as a buffer and a cement sort of blockade. And um, it does not stop the dust, does not stop the does noise. Does not stop the what? Dust. The dust. Dust, okay, yep. Or the noise or the light. Um, I do hear the trucks for the better part of the winter in and out of the salt shed um, beeping and making noise. So this idea of a fence and trees and it sounds great, but the effectiveness is minimal. My real concern, however, is I was also a business owner in town for nine years, and I know that when another business comes in, no matter how small of a slice of the pie, it has an effect on all the businesses. And the effect is not a loose effect or an arbitrary effect. It was an effect on my time, my work, my family. And we have a lot of great businesses in our town and neighboring towns in Sunderland too. Dollar General is big business. It's big business. It's up there with McDonald's and it's up there with Starbucks and it is big business. And it is not, in my opinion, the type of business that um, our community supports. <laughs> I, I have been into Dollar General's, and the groceries they tend to carry are processed foods, high sugar, canned products, um, not fresh fruits. We have a, a beautiful farm stand across the street. We have a great new market coming into our town. We have several stores in Sunderland. You know, I think we have our quota for big business with a humongous Cumberland Farms going up on the corner of Elm and 5 and 10 and Circle K down the street. They serve a purpose. We have been um, 
accessing that uh, need in this community, and we've been able to keep a balance of big business and small community stores, and that, that is what I think we embody, and I, I think we're at our quota as far as big business goes. I, I think we need to... <laughs> I personally think that towns like South Deerfield are falling to the wayside, and um, we have something very unique here, and it's it's um, it's a ecosystem of people and working together and small business, and I I I I, I just really hope that that is the um, position we continue to hold. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jane. Hi, Jane Treger. Um, I just, I, I, I think the first, the, the hearing is very difficult back there, by the way. And uh, I, I think uh, the last person gave me the impression she lives behind the DPW, which I wanted to point out. We did not protect the people, we, that is, this town and these committees, did not properly protect the residents of Thayer Street from our own construction. So I would like to make sure that, uh, I personally would not like to see this store here at all, but if something of any kind, this committee should make sure that residential neighborhoods do not have to somehow deal with the incursion of business, I, I like business too, but should do a much more proactive job of protecting the boundaries between these two kinds of uh, zones. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Sure, why not? <laughs> My name is Bonnie C. I live at Mill Village West. And um, I just wanted to say that I have not seen this, the plan, up close. And the next presentation of the plan, which I believe will be more specific, I would like to see the presentation right up in front of us with, with you explaining, okay, this is the front of the building, this is the back of the building, it's facing north, west. I want very specific details of what we're gonna see here. This, I don't know anything, right? I mean, I basically know that the entrance is on Mill Village. I mean, I'm not, I mean on five and 10. But when you do your presentation, for the benefit of every, everybody here, we need to know specifics. I want to, I want to see you in front of the plan, and I want the plan to be big size, so we all can see basically what we're talking about. And I'd like to hear you say, this is the north side, this is the west side, you know, very specific. This is where the fence will be, this is how high it will be, this is how many, this is where the parking spaces will be. Um, I want to see some real specifics. And I think everyone here pretty much wants to see the same thing. And a lot of us just don't have that information. And that'll be provided. I, Thank I, you. I hear you loud and clear. Okay. Um, this was a preliminary meeting. Mm -hmm. This is not our formal application, just so we're clear, which en enables us, and we've got a lot of good notes, to, to get all of your comments and then to come okay. back with an even better product, mm -hmm. hopefully. But those details will, will be provided to you at their next hearing. I think it's all in the presentation, uh, largely in the presentation. I understand. You know, with somebody actually pointing to, you know, the details yes. and telling us what each thing is. Yes. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. What was your last name, ma'am? Bonnie C. Mill Village West. Could you, is it S E A S E A Y? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, Julie. Mine's really, um, so with that, with the presentation, oh, is it going to be your, a digital, like a PowerPoint? Excuse me, what something? was your name? Sorry, Lisa Zahn. Thank you. My family lives on it. So will it be like a digital presentation, something on a screen, PowerPoint, or is it just going to be like that enlarged? Like are you going to do step by step what it looks like from the back, the front, the side? 
we will have all the plans that are provided to the board uh, right. available for viewing. If you have a screen, we're happy to use it. Okay. I don't know if you guys we do, don't. but I mean, things some like yeah. well, they can be rented them. very cheap. <laughs> Good luck. Julie. Kathy brought up something, so I'm really representing my daughter's voice in this, who's not able to be here today. She just came back from um, London after doing a program in sustainability and design. Um, and one of the things that she's greatly concerned about this is the amount of packaging the store is going to create in terms of plastic bags, in terms of um, those prepackaged prunes. You can get one packaged or um, sandwiches packaged. It's all in plastic packaging. And um, uh, in this case, not that I want you to go through, but if it turns out we can't get rid of you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would insist that Dollar General start a package collection so that we don't further burden our town with recycling um, and increase our landfill costs because we'd be throwing all this uh, packaging and plastic into um, the landfill. I don't believe that they would participate in our landfill at all anyways. No, they, they like, you know how you can bring your bags to Big Y to return them? Mm -hmm. So the idea is all of our packaging, if we could then, that we get from the store, we can return it to the store we get it. Okay. I think that would make a lot of people happy. <laughs> Hi, my name is Tolly Stark. Um, I have a few questions and one thing to know. Um, starting with questions, I was wondering what kind of market study did you guys do to choose this location? <laughs> well, uh, first off, you guys is not Matt and I. We're the developer for the project, Dollar General. I met you guys as in Dollar General. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting to that. I, I don't work for Dollar General, mm -hmm. but I can give you a little bit of a view into what they've done. They, they extensively look at the market and study the demographics and the town, and they've identified this location as, as a great opportunity to do business and have sought out a location to do so to, uh, for quite some time. And we're finally here to present it to you. Can you be more specific on what kind of extensive study that is, what was involved, what considerations they took to come up with that? It's a market that they have looked at from a demographic, from an income standpoint, and have said that there's a opportunity here to serve a clientele. <laughs> Sorry, they're so cruel. Thank you. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to know is that um, along with the traffic and the infrastructure that's uh, I'm not really up to par in that area. There's the consideration that there are a lot of families that are bringing their children to school, and there's a lot of buses that I see at that intersection all the time, and I know that may not be considered peak hours, but that is a big impact on the community there. It's already kind of a dicey situation commuting to school. Elementary school um, opens at 8.30, and uh, to get to the elementary school, a lot of people are on 5 and 10 and turning down North Main Street right at that intersection. So I just want people to take that into consideration as well. And I also just really want to um, urge the planning board to look at the vision that we have for our town and take that into consideration as well as we um, go forward in this process. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else? There's got to be somebody else. No more qu Oh, I see. I knew it. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, Jack Bacco from North, North Hillside Road. Um, just for the sake of the general public and how the board works, can you tell us the order in which uh, any project, like a pro project like this, comes through and what happens first, what happens next? When does the Conservation Commission get involved? When does certain levels of review take place? Because it sounds like 
uh, to all of us. It feels like everything's ready-made, ready to go, and I know that's, that's how a lot of these things work. Uh, so there's obviously several layers of review yet to go. Correct. Is that right? Correct. Um, okay. So basically what happens is an applicant, as these people do, bring their proposal forward. They file papers with the building department, which they've done. They came here to discuss it informally to get some feedback or whatever it is. It seems like they've done uh, most of their homework. They're preparing uh, for their next meeting. I think it's scheduled in June and that's when they'll make their formal proposal then. And at that point, we'll ask them for different things, traffic studies and things like that, and that we have bylaws that we go by, and um, that's how the process will go. Uh, as far as um, any conservation or requests, we disseminate information to different boards, whether it's the police department, fire department, conservation commission, and all of the people in town and the different boards are notified and they all bring their questions forward. As they said earlier, they're going to have to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals right. for different applications as well. Right, okay. So, so the planning board will possibly recommend to the other boards uh, what, they, what you feel is No, not is necessarily. Something. It kind of right, works so the other way. They recommend they, to us, or they, they okay. whatever their findings but are. But nobody gets left out. I mean, there's nothing. No. no. Oh. Okay. Okay. Good. We all we get comment forms on every board for every other project. So. Okay. Conservation will influence what we decide. Mm -hmm. Okay. As as it as mm -hmm. I imagine it should. Yeah. So uh, that's what I was wondering. And one other comment is just to the to the group is, um, I think. This can be a a good sort of starting point to remind us to think about uh, reviewing. Um, a, you know, a master plan for the town mm -hmm. of how we want, uh, how we imagine, um, you know, that balance between residential and commercial uh, goes. If we have something to refer to, uh, then we can, the boards can use that as a guide for what mm -hmm. the general public feels is appropriate, and then maybe that can somehow influence whether or not, you know, project of this nature goes through. Well, just, just to give you, you all you folks a little bit of background, and I, I was kind of, 13 years ago, this is where our zoning bylaws. These are our zoning bylaws today, and they're going to get much bigger. Uh, I don't know how many of you went to our last town meeting and voted on our marijuana bylaws. Uh, I don't think, if many of you did, I don't know how many of you took the time to really understand them, and that all of these bylaws were put in place by you people, not just you, all the residents of town. And this is what we go by, you know. We go by the rules that you all have put before us to deal with. So, you know, um, to answer your question is, yeah, there, there is a problem, and it's, it's a continually evolving project. Okay, okay. thank you. Sure. Yes, sir. So as I, as I, Darren Gray again. So as I understand it, the planning board, as you say, you're here to enforce the zoning bylaws. They're black and white, very clear rules. If these gentlemen, you know, cross all their T's, dot all their I's, basically this board is pretty much compelled to approve them, is my understanding. To a certain degree. To a certain degree. Um, so for people in the audience and here and elsewhere that are concerned about this, the zoning board of appeals, that's a bigger place to drive a wedge. Um, that's where they need the special permit. You talk about the character of the neighborhood, character of the town. That is, you know, this process needs to be very well watched by all the townspeople for sure. Make sure everything's done the right way. The ZBA is another place. So don't lose your energy up front here by coming to this meeting. You, if you're concerned, you keep coming. I used to sit in a chair like Matthew over here, and the saying is, you win by losing slowly against a developer like this. You make it take a long time. Every meeting costs thousands of dollars. Every report costs thousands of dollars. Attorneys, all of the above. So if you are concerned about this development, keep coming, stay on top of everything, understand the ZBA, get there, because character of the neighborhood is something you can definitely influence, it's not quite as black and white, and I think we all have a very good understanding of what the character of our neighborhood is, much more than, than these gentlemen, so just process. Yes, sir.
My name is Matthew By. I live right next door. I do have one question, and I'm not really sure how to present this, but in the off chance this project does get approved and it goes through, what happens to that property or that building when four or five years down the road they go belly up, then we're going to be stuck with an eyesore or waiting for somebody else to take it over and rip it apart and put in new lights and new signs and everything else. We do know there are businesses in this town that for whatever reason haven't made it. And we do have storefronts periodically open. That's not a big deal, a little storefront, but I'd hate to see a building uh, uh, on this scale stuck right in the middle of everybody's face. That is empty. And then you do have more crime or possibility of fires or using it for a drug hangout, whatever. And heaven forbid the, you know, it, it fails. The people that live there on, in Mill Village have to look at it. I, I don't see it, it doesn't work. That's my opinion. I have nothing against big business. But I think we should look at what could happen down the road and how will that be dealt with. Are they going to have to take the building away and, and put the land back the way it is? Don't think so. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. I just want to add one more thing that kind of um, emphasizes what that gentleman said over there about 25, 30 years ago, my wife and I moved into Allen Drive. We were the first uh, piece of property on there. After the land was developed, there's a piece of property at the very end of the road in which the frontage of that road was not, it did not meet the requirements for a proper frontage. Um, myself and other neighbors came to the planning board um, in support of the owner of that to try to get an exemption from that. Um, and we had a very lengthy discussion. Thank goodness that uh, Mr. Upton was there with us uh, because when we had a discussion with the planning board about the fact that the gentleman who owned that property simply wanted to turn it into another piece of residential property, the big concern at the time was whoever bought that property could basically create a pathway for development in an area that's blocked between Allen Drive and uh, the transfer station. So we we're told at that meeting that it was not up to the planning board, it was up to the zoning board mm -hmm. to basically grant that approval or not. So a number of us went to the zoning board and tried to emphasize the fact of what that particular development was meant for. It was meant for an area of residential buildup. It was not meant to create another subdivision in the back. And based on that discussion, we were able to get an exemption. So what I'm trying to support with what this gentleman said is everybody in this room needs to go to that zoning board meeting when this property is being discussed for the very purposes of trying to keep Deerfield what Deerfield is and not have a box store brought in town. Thank you. Well, seeing no more hands, um, Yes. We'll move on to our next thing. I know I'd get, I know I'd get somebody. <laughs> Come on up. Hi. My name is Carol Rogowski, and I live on Stillwater Road, just a couple houses down Hi. from the bridge. Hi. Um, I have maybe a very specific um, concern to the people located near the Stillwater Bridge and Upper Road also. Um, what I can see from this Dollar General store coming in to South Deerfield is, for one, the traffic along Stillwater Road and Upper Road, which is used as a shortcut to Greenfield, which there, Greenfield has three dollar stores in Greenfield. Three dollar stores. You know, we, we don't need another dollar store. It, you know, South Deerfield is not the place for a dollar store. It, it, we don't need any big business in, in Deerfield. That's why the majority of us 
want to live in Deerfield to get away from all of that. And, and uh, the specific problem that I'm speaking of is the Stillwater Bridge is a big enough problem as it is, as you probably all well know. And it, the traffic, because of the Stillwater area, tubers and whatnot, is it's, it's become a, a nightmare for the people who live there. And what I can see happening is not only an increase in traffic along the Mill Village and Stillwater area, um, is the trash that's going to be generated from products being purchased at a dollar store on the corner of 5 and 10 on people's way to the river. Because I walk the river almost on a daily basis with my dogs, and I see trash, crap left by the tubers, and, you know, it's a fishing area, for one. I mean, I know I'm not here to talk about that, but what I can see happening is people stopping at this dollar store and leaving all their trash, because dollar stores sell inexpensive, um, disposable products made in China. And that is what I can see is going to be left at Stillwater at the end of the weekend, along with the beer bottles and everything else that's left there. But, but they're not uh, going to sell beer. I, I, I know. Beer, but that's what's left there. But it, I can just see the increased trash from items being purchased at this Dollar General on the corner because that's going to be Mill Village is a direct route to Stillwater Road and to the Stillwater Bridge. So I can just see that we're going to get an increased amount of trash because of the items that they sell at the Dollar General store. But, you know, South Deerfield is not the place for a Dollar General. You know, we, 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 don't, we don't have big businesses here. We don't want big businesses here. There's going to be a lot of competition uh, for the small businesses, which we love to deal with on a regular basis. And it, it's, there's no place for it a Dollar General in South Deerfield. I, I've always been a risk taker, so what the heck. Since I have this crowd here, I, and it seems like I keep getting this feedback that uh, and this is, I want to know as a Deerfield resident and how I can use my position to help. Should we now chase the bakery out of town that we just sold the land say we don't want the bakery? But that's not. Is it's different? No. Oh, wait, 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 please. One, one at a time. I, 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 think, I can't I, hear you all. I think that's not our purpose tonight. Yeah, I know. I, okay. I just, I just that, wanted to that, know. That was too good. That's all right. I don't care. Yeah, okay. It is. Ken, come on now. What's his last name? What's his last name? Thank you. What's his last name? Ken Cutterback. Ken Cutterback. Oh, 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 we're next. You're next. You're next. She's next. Hi, my name's Ken Cutterback. Um, now I know why I got off the board 15 years ago. Exactly. <laughs> um, I'm not going to take that long. <laughs> you took, I mean, you, you held up a large, uh, you know, document of zoning regulations <laughs> and uh, didn't mention the site plan development regulations and all the other regulations. Uh, sure. Those have all been passed over the years. Uh, most of them have been put forward by the planning board. And most town meetings that have taken them up have approved them. In fact, I can't think of any regulations in my tenure on the board that were ever turned down. Um, the process is meant to get input. You have a large crowd here tonight giving input. We have developers in here for a preliminary plan discussion. They haven't presented anything formal yet. They're certainly getting enough input as to how they're going to, how they should design it, or design the site at least, if they're going to continue with the project. Uh, the regulations are there for the Zoning Board of Appeals and the Planning Board to review uh, all plans in relation to them. Uh, you can't just say no to a project because you don't want 
the project. There have to be legitimate zoning or planning board, I mean, or zoning regulation reasons for not implementing it. You know, it, it would be great if you could just turn around or we as a town could decide and pick what businesses come in. We don't have that option. Um, so it, it's a process. Certainly the words I've heard tonight and the encouragement to continue to attend the hearings is, is definitely important. And the planning board works in relative obscurity most of the time, uh, except for the few abutters that show up for the small ANRs and others that show up. So um, you've got your work cut out for you on this one, obviously. And it was an interesting way to introduce the project to the town by cutting all the trees down. So it's so all very unfortunate. Um, but anyways, that's it. Thank you, Ken. Jane. Of all the stuff we've ever you done, this is the biggest crowd we've ever done. Even when we were, listen, even when we were trying to rezone all of the people going. Yeah, I, know. I think, um, Mr. Camosa, I'd like to be treated with more respect than you offer tonight. And I think you've gotten some feedback on that comment. Now, um, I think this I want to address to the rest of us. I think it's become very clear we have, as somebody pointed out, the planning board usually works in, in obscurity, quietly doing their work. And then there's all these other committees. I think it's time to really, for us to all consider, I can't remember quite what the title is, but we need somebody in town who is a economic and cultural um, not ombudsman hired person who is what's the t word I'm looking for town not manager we've got a town you know a, a town whatever that person is called and it's clear that that person would be having meetings and hearing what the town. It's not obvious. Some people think it's obvious what the town is. It's not obvious to everybody. And it's certainly not obvious to people who do their work. This, these people are not responsible. These are young architects or engineers who are doing the best they can. A, a person who is responsible for the economic and cultural development of this town will be searching out the businesses that we want in town, not waiting till somebody shows up and wants to land on us. And that's what we need. I re recommend that the next time we have votes on this subject, we vote for this person, and then we bother the hell out of them <laughs> and tell them exactly what we want, and we support them then. Oh, Jane, just so you know, we, we did, I did try, and the, the board did try to get a town planner involved, but it didn't go anywhere. I think we need a town planner or a town economic developer or something. Listen, I started a small business, and it didn't work. But you know, you, t you start. I had started the Deerfield Arts Bank. OK, so this is not the town for that. But I we keep trying, and we keep doing small businesses because that's who we are, and that's what we like. And we happen to be on a major road that connects all the towns. We are the hub between Amherst, Northampton, and Greenfield. All you have to do is look at a map. And 5 and 10 and 116 are these major thoroughfares that connect all of these major towns, major, you know, whatever, <laughs> it's all relative, to, and we are in the middle. So clearly, you know, and it's not that Deerfield has more drug traffic, it just happens to be we're in the hub and we pick them up as they go through. And uh, we need some help in making sure we don't get uh, trampled on by people who want to turn 5 and 10 into Route 9 in Hadley. I guess that's, yes, right. See, we have a room full. Um, oh. I'm going to speak to some of what Kip said and what Ken said. And 
Anything that happens in town, whether you're next door to it or far away, I live in an isolated part of town, so I'm very fortunate. But something that happens on 5 and 10 or Greenfield Road affects all of us. So all of us should come to these meetings and present their views. We've had a lot of changes in town, and this is the largest group I've seen. And it affects all of us. Uh, some of the projects were mentioned in the past or just this tonight. And we didn't have this kind of attendance. So I'm urging you to come to all these meetings because whether it's in your backyard or 10 miles away, it affects all of us. And Darren, I think, brought up a point, and Jack brought it up, uh, about the zoning board. I think that's the last meeting that they'll have, or they wait till everybody else puts their input in, oh, typically. And that'll be the last place to be. I think that's the way it goes. But the other boards, I don't think there's any really format, but I think that's the last one that they'll have to go okay. see. And, and the building... The bi I don't know. The building inspector is the zoning enforcement officer of the town, too. So, Yes, but the zoning board grants variances. Yeah, in the, that's right. Okay. Yeah. So please yes, all attend. That's all I have to say. I, I mean to anything that happens in town. Put your input in. All of the meetings are posted ahead of time so that everybody that knows. That website, Town of Deerfield. Town of Deerfield website and out and here on the board out YouTube. front. And on, it's, on, it's on the channel, uh, whether 15. We meet regularly. They meet as need be. <laughs> so the, our board is always this Monday. Actually, it would have been last Monday. Um, Except for the because voting. Of the voting, yeah. That was changed. It. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Meg England, Grave Street. I just wanted to encourage the board to support CISA and so be a local hero. And I know I'm understanding that we can't pick and choose the businesses, that's a legal thing that comes in, but somehow we can influence this to support small local business, locally owned, not national chains. We go down to Hadley for that because they voted to have the big box stores. And we go to Hadley and we go to Greenfield to go to the dollar store and to go to Big Y and yada yada. We go to Atlas Farm to get our local vegetables. We go to Millstone to support our local neighbors. And I'm really looking forward to our local uh, market coming back into town. And I want to support them. And since, well, uh, Cumberland Farms is, oh, that's a done deal. <laughs> Well, we want to support our Cumberland Farms, I guess, <laughs> uh, not our not another box store. I think that's as big a box as we're gonna. I want to see on in our town and on the whole strip between uh, Greenfield and well, Five and Ten, all the way down to Northampton. Uh, just let's let's be local heroes and support local agriculture, small businesses, local bakeries, yes, and local family businesses, and not big box stores and just want to echo that I think everyone here is just ripping mad that that place was clear cut those beautiful old trees I am so mad about that and perhaps perhaps there can be some way to enforce in, as part of the uh, re-landscaping of the area that they can uh, plant not just shrubberies you know, nice little shrubberies, but uh, real trees. Some replace some of those with mature trees, not the little baby ones that die, but mature trees that will to replace and that rebeautify that area. It's such a gorgeous strip, especially in the fall with the foliage that was lost. Oh my God, I love love that strip of five and ten. So anyway, it's a huge loss to our town, and I would encourage the board to, or whoever, whichever board, Your to encourage. Name. Uh, replanting mature trees. Your last name? Oh, England, like the country. Oh, okay, thank you. I got a comment. Well, we can sort of pick and choose, but they're going to be a generic rule. You can't say we don't want Dollar General and want Wilson's or Pennies or whatever. You do it by general regulations like square footage or whatever you want, hours of operation. So all of you can put that input in and present it to the planning board. And it goes to town meeting, and they can, you can vote that kind of stuff in. But you can't say, we don't want Dollar General. It's going to be a generic rule. It affects everybody. <coughs> well, 
Well, it looks like you guys got your homework set out for you, but you know uh, kind of what you got your game plan is going to need to be. And um, good luck to you. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for meeting with us. Obviously, there's a, a little bit of um, displeasure for the project, but we're happy to take a look at it. We're happy to reach out to the to the neighbors, especially, and work with them. Um, and get us to something that they can. That, that'll okay. be a good project for everybody. Okay, great. And thanks again for meeting with us. All right, thank you very much. Cool. Do we have any more? <coughs> I, don't, I don't see that we have we're, nothing else. I want to look at any mail. I don't think there was, there was some information from different planning boards. I don't think there was much that really affected us. Did you look through it? I did. I'll let you. Did you have did you have any of those little maps that you were going to leave here, or you did you take them all? Uh, we'll be providing a formal submission, so you can. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. And I'm just saying that that could be posted here in the town hall somewhere too. Sure. If you sure. want to do that, you could post you want, it so you people. Send your hard copies. Would that be helpful? Um, no, it's it's not. It's not. I'm just saying. But see how people take a picture that they could. If we left it here, they could come and look at it. Yeah. Okay. Why not? This one is to keep sheep. Two sheep, by the way. Keep what? Two sheep. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Why do we do this? I don't know. I understand. Oh, yeah. Sure. Good. Well, my comments were. Uh, no, I know you were looking at the audience. I've been in here a lot of times. Someone's fine. Bobby's garage. Yeah. 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 Yeah.